Hi, and welcome to the MVAC lab. Native people in the La Crosse region manufactured a variety of tools and other items like whistles from animal bone. Bison scapula hose used for digging and weeding played an important role in late pre-contact Oneota agriculture. Today, UW La Crosse Professor Emeritus and MVAC Senior Research Associate, Dr. James Thieler, shares how Oneota people acquired, prepared, used, and eventually discarded these tools we find in the archaeological record. I'm Jim Thieler. I'm a Senior Research Associate here at the Mississippi Valley Archaeology Center, and they've asked me today to talk about bison scapula hose. It's a common artifact that we find on our Oneota sites. We found more than 200 of these in our many excavations in the La Crosse area. And so I want to, want to discuss how they are acquired, used, and discarded. Um, probably first good to mention that, that different regions of the country have different types of hose. We go to the American bottom where the late prehistoric Mississippian people lived and, and were involved with agriculture. Uh, they had flint hose there. This is a hoe from that area. It's made of a flat type of flint, a tabular flint called Mill Creek Chert. And it has a very lustrous polish from being used. They have very tough soils there, clay rich soils. And those soils wouldn't allow a scapula hoe, a bone hoe, to last as long. So, so they have preferentially, they have stone hoes in some areas. Uh, in some parts of the country, we don't have one here. They took freshwater mussel shells, clam shells, perforated those, and used those for hose. They probably had a short lifespan. Uh, the mussel shell was uh, abundant in many of the streams. So uh, uh, different regions have different kinds of hose and often match with different kinds of soils or availability of resources. Our, our hose are made preferentially out of bison shoulder blades or scapulas. And this is a bison scapula from a pretty large male uh, bison. This is a modern scapula. And you can see it uh, uh, probably needs a little work before it can be modified into an agricultural tool. I did want to also mention uh, regarding scapula hose that male scapulas are preferred over females. They're heavier and larger uh, and would last longer. It's interesting that we can take and measure the neck of the scapula right here at the narrowest point, and if they're smaller than 67 millimeters across, they're female. If they're larger than 67 millimeters across, they're male. Uh, we've done samples of modern scapula as well as archaeological scapula, and we get a bimodal distribution. As you further you go west, as you go into central South Dakota, for example, I measured 22 scapula hose there, and 20 were male and 2 were female. When we get to the lacrosse area, it's a more equal balance between males and females, probably because you're far from the source, getting these during summer hunts or in trade, and uh, they, you take what you can get. In our area, they sometimes have elk scapula, which are even lighter and thinner, and they're used as hose, and you never see that on the plains. So, you know, hose samples I've looked at on the Great Plains. Elk aren't preferred because they're too small and light. Studying the, the archaeological specimens, we can look for different marks of manufacture on these. Uh, you see this large scapular spine here. Uh, this is always removed from our scapula hose, and it's pretty clear how they did that. We find nice in size marks here. You can just simply take a flake and cut in here. It's like scoring glass. And they would take a hammer and pop this off. And often take this last piece here, which didn't come off as easily, take a hammer and, and break that off. This, this border here is rather thick. They always remove this border. And once you remove this, this dull edge here and sharpen it, you can take this and split this off. These are often split rather, rather coarsely. Uh, scapulas, when they're fresh, they have a very sharp margin. This is called the glenoid cavity. This is where the humerus uh, goes into the shoulder blade, the upper 
uh, leg bone goes into the front leg bone goes into the shoulder blade. So it's razor sharp on new ones. You can almost cut your finger. And these are always ground down and smoothed. This side is naturally smooth. And we know that we look at the archaeological specimens that they smoothed these down. So we're pretty sure that they put a strap over the top of these. Uh, I've made a few of these out of fresh bison scapulas and found it pretty easy to, as I said before, to take and score this margin and break these off and take this margin and split this piece, splits off pretty nicely. All you need is a sandstone hammer. You can grind this down in a few minutes and you can literally take from a fresh scapula to a scapula hoe ready for hafting in maybe 30 minutes or so. Pretty simple procedure. Uh, in looking at wear patterns on scapula hose, we can see that the most wear occurs on this face and the least wear on the face with the, with the scapular spine. Of course, if you have the scapular spine ridge, uh, it would cause a drag in the soil and it might be a problem. And when we look at the wear and polish on these, we, we see the polish is always heavy on this side and is always lighter on this side. It indicates that the hoeing procedure uh, was one would expect the hoe to be used, resulted in more polish on, on that side. Hafting of scapula hoes uh, depends on your region. There are different, different hafting methods. Sometimes they're notched down here. Uh, there are other ways to, to trim the margins. But our hoes often have this, this depression in the neck of the scapula. You see this here? Here's one here. This is called channeling. And uh, they still occur everywhere. This is pretty distinct for the lacrosse area. And many of our hoes, not all, but many of them, end up with this channel in them. And when we look at a hafted hoe, one we had students haft some time ago, and uh, you can see they have a they have, uh, uh, straps over the top and wound around the sides on a wooden half. But when you look at this, the hose at an angle. You know, I don't think any other people like hose at an angle. They like their hose straight. And the way to do this is to have to put something because of the irregular shape of the neck. Because you want the flat surface against the soil, you have to put something against that hoe. And that was probably something organic. I presume it's a piece of wood or something else organic uh, because we don't find anything in these. I've excavated these out uh, when they came out of the field many times and there's no stone or anything. And you can see parts that are down. Hoe gets loose in the bindings, rocks back and forth. And whatever they put in there to level the hoe, it apparently creates that channel. Uh, scapula hoes probably didn't have a long life expansion. Uh, we don't know if they lasted a year or two years, how much activity. Hoes are used to hoe corn and kill weeds and hoe up, hoe up uh, soil around uh, uh, corn roots to hill the corn, to hold the corn up, and also to remove the weeds, as I just said. Uh, Hose begin to break down as this middle part of the blade gets very thin. It kind of forks, and you can imagine it doesn't hoe as well as it did, doesn't function as well as it did. And about this point, we start getting breaks off of here, and uh, 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 hose eventually become uh, useless, and that they can are, are not as functional if they don't have uh, if they if they have the availability of more scapulas. They will just simply replace these and we'll find these in the bottoms of pits where they toss them away. Occasionally they take them like this big heavy male scapula. Uh, they take these and use them as, as probably hand digging tools, sort of as you would use a garden trough. Uh, so we find these kind of worn down like this and used. And, Special thanks to Dr. Thieler for teaching us about these noteworthy bone tools. And thank you for watching. To learn more, please visit our website at mbac.uwlax.edu.